going to make it very difficult for me to put myself in your shoes if this is how I'm feeling. So the self-other is a big problem, I think. Another problem I think we have, in, especially in our culture, is what I call perceived dissimilarity. It's another very fundamental belief in our culture, especially, is that I am different from anybody else in the entire world. That you are unique. There's no one in the world like you, right? Seems like you can almost hear the people saying this. It's almost like a slogan for a Coke or something. Be yourself. You're your own unique person. And we get this message a lot in our culture. It's all over the place, and including, in, including in, in popular media, right? Politics, we have red states and blue states, a big division, right? How separate we are from each other. How dissimilar red state people and blue state people are, progressives and conservatives. How can you even have any middle ground? You've got to be one or the other. That's the message we're getting a lot. And psychology talks about this too. Pop psychology does. It's a famous book from a, a while ago now, but this guy's written a book called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Can you imagine a bigger distinction between people? We're not even from the same planet, <laughs> right? We're from different planets even. You can't get any more different than that. And so he's written this book and made a lot of money selling this book and the website and these seminars talking about how men communicate one way and how women communicate another way and this leads to a lot of problems and on and on. He's done very well peddling this idea. But it's not just pop psychology, it's, it's mainstream psychology. There's an area of psychology called personality psychology. That's not what I do, but there's an area of psychology called personality psychology. Sometimes it's called individual differences. Think about that term. What do you think they study? Individual differences. They study how we're different from each other, right? The ways that we're different. And so one of the things they study is one of the founding uh, mainstream main ideas of theirs is that there are five dimensions of personality. So they call them the big five. A ton of research about the big five. The big five, if you're curious, here's the big five, right? Openness, oh, the, big, the, the last five got cut off. Openness, no, oh, oh, they're sorry, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, neuroticism. How do you remember the big five? Ocean, right? Yeah, ocean. See, you can use an acronym right there. Hey, you learned something. All right. But these are fundamental personality dimensions, right, that everybody has. And in fact, people have done cross-cultural research about this. We've measured the big five in lots of countries around the world. If you want some proof of that, here's some proof. It's a very hard to read graph. I know it's a lot of information. But along the bottom, these are different countries. And this is the level of extroversion, the average level of extroversion in each of these countries. And I think what's tempting to conclude from this graph is that there's a lot of variability here, right? Not every country is the same. But I think that's really the wrong conclusion to make from this information. I think that's the mistake. Because what I really believe is that we are all the same. And in fact, our differences are nothing in the face of our similarities. And when it comes right down to it, you and I are the same person. Now that seems strange to say, right? I'm up here and you're down there. You've got hair and I don't. <laughs> right? A lot of differences between you and me that, that seem really important, don't they? They seem like a significant thing. But I think those are all on the surface. Those are surface things. Those are things that, are, that don't really matter. Those aren't the important things. So I'm going to go back to some of the evidence I talked about. There's other people who think there's so much difference between you and me, between all these other people. Let's go back to that Mars and Venus guy. Well, actually, when you look at the research about this, people who have actually done a lot of research on this, like this guy Burleson, he seems to suggest something else. He says, more specifically, research indicates that both men and women seek intimacy from their close relationships, see empathy and trust as core features of such relationships, and follow similar implicit rules. What, what he's really saying is that men and women are the same. They're not any different. They're not from Mars and Venus. We want intimacy. We want empathy. We want trust. We want to communicate about it. In fact, we are incredibly similar. So the evidence that 
he has in his lab and he's reviewing suggest that we're all the same, actually. There aren't these big differences. So I think Mars and Venus is a great way to sell books, but I don't think it's right. Now let's go back to that extroversion thing. Here's another version of that graph. I'm, I'm going to just bore you a tiny little bit with some statistics now because I've added something to this graph. These little black bars here, those are called standard deviation bars. And what that means is that 68% of people fall between the top of that black bar and the bottom. 68% of the people in that country fall between those, the top and the bottom of that black bar. And if you look across this graph, don't you see that all the black bars are really overlapping? That in fact, all the different cultural variations that we're so focused on and that seem so important are really not that different. So let's look at it just a couple in, in particular. So let's just pick, I just picked two that I thought might seem quite different on the surface. Here's the USA and Zimbabwe. Look at their, their extroversion levels. Almost identical, right? And those standard deviation bars are overlapping almost entirely. What this is saying is that people in Zimbabwe and people in the United States really have the same levels of extra extroversion. If you're a real extrovert in the United States, you'd be a real extrovert in Zimbabwe. If you're an introvert in one, you'd be an introvert in the other. Really, we're pretty, pretty similar. And if you find the two countries with the biggest difference, the biggest mean difference, it turns out it's France and Serbia. Two countries that, you know, are sort of part of Europe, have a sort of a common history, common cultures in many ways. But even that difference is not that big. And those standard, error, standard deviation bars are overlapping, still some, not totally, but pretty overlapping. And so what I would say is that people are actually quite similar. They're much more similar than, than we are different. But the cost of our focusing on our differences is that it makes it very difficult to think that I can take your perspective or that you can take mine. Because we're so different. We're red and blue states and we're you know, bald and not bald. I don't, lots of things different, but those are almost meaningless distinctions. And in all the ways that really count, you and I are the same person. But if we forget that and we focus on our differences, it's going to make it much harder for us to be empathic. And so there's a real cost to this sort of cult of individuality, this cult of distinctiveness that we believe in so strongly in our culture. We want to believe that I am a unique, delicate flower, but we're really not. I'm not, you're not either. We're the same, we're the same people. So I, I think that's a, that's a real barrier to feeling empathy. Okay, so that's sort of depressing news. <laughs>